Okay, hi everyone and uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, I will be talking about designing for involuntary participation. My name is Siri Sandqvist and I come from Leivikstaden, that's why I'm wearing this beautiful orange hoodie. And I will start off by telling you a little bit about the company I work for. So Leivikstaden, or the LARP factory, you could always call it in English, uh, is a Swedish uh, company that do edu LARP uh, all over Sweden. Uh, we are uh, five employees at the Westeros office and then we have two other employees. One of them is here, it's Josefin, so please talk to her as well. Um, who uh, works from Gothenburg. And this is actually an old uh, number. I uh, checked it with the, my boss on the way here, but I didn't have time to change it. Uh, we don't meet over 3,000 children a year. We meet nine to 10,000 children a year. Uh, so I'm sorry for having not updated uh, my presentation. Um, we work with kids in all ages. Uh, well, that's a bit of a lie. Uh, the youngest ones we work with are seven or eight years old. We are starting to work more and more with six-year-olds as well because the funding has changed in Sweden recently. And then we work with all ages up to uh, 18 and above. <coughs> so we meet these kids mostly through schools, but we also do LARPs at libraries, museums, and in universities, as well as uh, meeting companies uh, doing sort of like kickoffs for adults, uh, working through municipalities and so on. So, um, <laughs> obstacles. Uh, we are talking about involuntary participants, right? Uh, and to understand how to uh, bring them in and make them feel safe and happy being there doing something they might not really want to do, it's important to understand what the obstacles are. The obstacles can be many different things, but I will concentrate on two, which is the most, I guess, common ones that I recognize. Uh, and that would be nerves and social status, especially in school children. And these are the things that often keeps them imprisoned or keeps them from um, acting out, being a part of uh, the game that we are playing together. Uh, and there's different things we can do to work around both nerves and social status. Um, so what can we do and how do we do it? Uh, you can go above it from different perspectives. You can work on it as a GM uh, in the way you design your workshops and the way you design your LARPs. And I will very quickly talk about some of all these things and then we will go into what this point of this lecture is, which is uh, having you guys practice writing characters that makes them feel happy. So, uh, nerves and uh, social status. When it comes to preparations and workshops, this is like a really important place to start. I'm just gonna make sure I'm not missing anything important. Yeah. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to own the situation immediately. You're coming into a group of children. In our case, uh, since we are not teachers ourselves, it's children we never met before and we will probably never meet them again. So it's really important that the first thing they feel when we walk into the room is that they can trust us, especially when it comes to the nerves. If they feel like, oh, these seems to be reasonable adults that I can trust with my time, it will be easier for us to make them participate. And the same thing when it comes to social status, especially in groups with maybe teenagers where there's a lot of social hierarchies going on. Uh, there can be a kind of destructive uh, energy going on in some classes we meet. And then it's also important that I come in and I own the situation so that they know that I am on top of their social hierarchy in this room. <laughs> um, and another thing that's really important is to give really clear instructions of what the day will contain. This will help with the nerves because then they will know what's going to happen to them. They don't have to wonder. They ha don't have to build up this like horrible image of these horrible things I will do to them uh, because they will know already. Uh, another thing that we do is that we gradually ease them into taking on a role. For us at Live Staden, that is the most important thing. Uh, we always have quite adapted roles for the participants. And generally we say we'd rather put two hours on workshops and one hour on LARP than the other way around. Because we want to make them feel comfortable with taking on a role, which might be the most scary thing we force them to do during the whole day. And to do that, we go about it in grades. We make the level of participation harder and harder very slowly. 
one thing you can do is just like uh, walking into the room and saying, hi everyone, my name is Siri, I would like what, to know what your name is. Could you all please just say your name when I count to three? And then they do. And then all of a the sudden they have all participated. They said their name out loud. We have already forced them to take part and take up space in the room. And that will make it easier. So when we go into making silly games or theater exercises, they will gradually feel more and more comfortable with doing that and being active. Um, yes, also uh, we like to use props and clothes. We always have clothes for the children. Uh, even if it's like a modern day scenario, we will bring like modern day suits or ties or silly hats or something for them that they need to wear. And what you can do to make that feel more comfortable, because obviously this is something that a lot of kids feel really anxious about, taking on clothes that's not their own, uh, is that you make it an option really in the beginning. Uh, two weeks ago, me and my colleague were having a workshop of, uh, about media, social media. And uh, we started off by just having a bag of hats in the middle of the room. And when the kids came in, we said like, hi, nice to see you. Do you want to have a hat? You can pick a hat if you want. And all of them did because we were offering them an option. We weren't saying you need to wear that silly hat or you can go out of here. We were just saying like, there's some funny stuff here. You can play around with it if you want to. And that helped them feeling more comfortable with taking on the clothes. Another thing is to know what words to use. Uh, we have uh, a scenario that Josephine, my colleague, wrote an article about in the last year's uh, Sommerkota book called Alpha Omega. Uh, and it's about gender roles and equality and they play uh, space people on another planet where there are no genders but there are something we call Tau, Alpha and Omega, which of course correlates to the gender roles of our world. Uh, and to mark that, they have to have red and green uh, makeup in their face. I don't know if you ever tried it, but if you walk into a room and ask a bunch of 14 year old boys to put on makeup, they will most likely yell, scream, throw things and run out. Uh, so we don't say that. We say they have to have their markings or these cool tattoos we're going to paint on them. And then there is a little bit less of the yelling and the screaming and the running away at least. So that's like just one of the small examples of how words can be really important in making them feel more comfortable. Right. Yes, so as a GM then, no? No? Yes, as a GM. Uh, here you have two of my wonderful colleagues. Uh, this is uh, Miriam on the right and uh, Niklas on the left. Uh, Miriam is at one of our summer camps and I think she's like a crazy person, I don't really know. Uh, she generally ends up playing the villain. Uh, and uh, Niklas on the end is the fairy uh, Milvi in one of our uh, preschool games uh, about saving uh, the nature and helping Milvi, the sad little fairy. Uh, as a GM, it's really important that you are prepared and secured in what you're doing. This goes back to what I was talking about in the beginning of owning the room and being clear with what we're going to do. If the kids feel like you are secure, they will feel more secure. Pretty simple. Another thing we like to do is that we like to be really silly in front of the children. This is of course a calibration you have to do based on how the group dynamics are. But often the biggest problem is that they don't really know what LARP is. They don't really know how to take on a role. And if I am super, super LARPing, like really LARPing, then they will have a measuring stick for how much they are supposed to LARP. And this you can do in many different ways. I will talk a little bit more about it later when we go into like the actual design of it. But another thing could be that like during the preparations, when we do silly games, the teacher that's not a part of holding the workshop or the game, will always like be doing the same activities as the children and doing it really, really big to give them sort of like a level of, this is completely normal and acceptable. You can do this if you want to. Um, we also try to always be approachable for questions uh, for the children, even during the game. So we will make sure that if one of us is having an important scene driving plot, well, another one will be more less active. So if the children have any questions or anything feels uncomfortable, they can always grab us. We will walk to the side and we will talk about it and help them to find a way to feel more comfortable again. Uh, also, of course, as a GM, it's important to be aware of the group you're working with. 
uh, for those of you who are teachers, you already know your groups pretty well, but for us coming in, never seen th these children before, it's really important to know, is this a stable group? Or is this maybe a group that has some issues socially? Uh, can we ask them to divide in two groups, for example? Or will that just create a lot of mess and should we just count them into groups? And knowing this and being able to read a group is of course really hard, but it's really important if you want to make a safe and uh, secure LARP experience for these poor people that we are forcing to LARP. So design then, <laughs> and this is like the sort of um, basic of what we're going to try today. Uh, I like to look at design as a layered cake, hence the beautiful cake. And uh, some of the things uh, I think Sarah will go into more later. Um, one thing that's really important is that you give them different levels of involvement. And I will not say anything more about that. Just go and listen to Sarah and she will say the same thing, but better. Um, but we make sure to have like personal plots, group plots, uh, a common story for the whole LARP. And in that way, the different children can participate on their own level where they feel comfortable. Uh, another thing that we do is that we like to start with a set piece. And this ties into the whole being silly in front of the children thing. Uh, we sort of like uh, go out and do this huge scene with the two NPCs that uh, plays this really strong emotions largely. And this makes them spectators. So they can just look for the beginning of the game and ease into the role taking. An example is a LARP we have about uh, medieval laws. Uh, it's set in a uh, medieval uh, court and uh, it starts with the MPC player or the teacher uh, from Leibrechtstaden who plays the judge holding a big speech of this is how the rules works because we are in court so these are the things you need to remember and after going through all these like rules that are also off game instructions of how to play in this area he or she will go and now I want someone from the farmers to stand up and tell us what's uh, happened. And now I want someone from the city to stand up and tell us what's happened. And in that way we direct them to start to take space. And when we then let them go to go and do all they want and solve their plots and find the treasures and all the other kind of cool stuff that's going to happen, they have already been eased into the situation. Yes. But uh, what I will talk to you mostly about today and what we also will try to do is character building. We generally have already written characters. This is because it's uh, easier, because it takes much less time. And if you have a short amount of time when you work with the children, you want to be able to put as much of that time into going into character as possible instead of, okay, so what, who are you? What, what's your background? Instead, we have these like already made uh, cards, character cards that we hand out in most of our games, not all of them, but most of our games. And when we write them, we do it based on some really simple guidelines that we realized from practice <laughs> during the years are really effective. The most important thing is that we try to make sure that the aims and the goals are super, super um, clear for the character. So what is the aim of my character and what is the goal of my character. This will give the children something to fall back on during the LARP, so they will have something to go back to when the actual LARPing bit is starting to feel kind of weird. Um, right, let's see. Here we go. We are approaching the end of me just gibbering on and you will start to do this by yourself. Um, this is an example of how we usually put it. We usually have a name already made for them, and then we put in a male and a female name or a gender neutral name. And we also often make them choose, so they can choose to play men or women as long as they do it with respect. Because we think it's important that you have that space to be whatever or whoever you want to be. Um, we also give them, as I said, a motivation, an aim and a goal. And we often give them already made relationships as well. And this is to make sure that they don't get isolated during the game. And finally, another thing that we like to do is to give them an emotion or a playable trait. And this can be really simple. It can be like, you like to hug people and you hate people that lies. 
or you like to tell stories, but you hate people that hug you. And there you have a conflict built into the LARP as well. And by giving them these really like easy character traits to fall back on, it will be easier for them to actually be a character rather than themselves.